welcome back. You're watching Inside Kolkata. We're in conversation with the brand ambassadors of West Bengal on how more investment can be brought into the state. Sanjeev, let me ask you, since we're talking about building brand West Bengal, and you know, if you look at, and I've, I've got like tons of these booklets that the government has been handing out as, at investor roadshows, and if you look at the areas of focus or opportunity that the government is looking at, urban infrastructure and housing, transport, food processing, horticulture, MSME and textile, IT software and hardware, manufacturing, healthcare, energy infrastructure, hospitality and tourism, financial services, I mean, you want to be something for everybody, right? And that's isn't how you build a brand? Well, uh, I think there's opportunity certainly in uh, many areas as far as West Bengal is concerned. Uh, there are advantages as far as natural resources is concerned. There are advantages in terms of proximal markets are concerned or both within and outside. But <clears throat> I, I, I like to just, you know, talk about two opportunities which I think are uh, uh, very interesting for West Bengal. See, one is on the food processing yeah. side. Uh, now, food processing per se at a national level is a, is a big opportunity itself mm. because India processes under 10% of its agri-produce right. and huge amount of wastages and mm. this figure for developed economies is anywhere between 30 and 80%. Mm. Now, West Bengal is a great place to do that because it's, it's the largest producer of vegetables. And fruits as well. Uh, yeah, fruits as well. It is the largest producer of rice. It has a rich uh, natural resource as far as the... Uh, you know, the uh, marine uh, uh, opportunity is concerned. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of uh, positive factors in, in that favor. Okay, but what about manufacturing, Mr. Neoti? And we come back again as far as the perception problem is concerned. And yes, the government has made efforts to try and bring down the problem of unionization, restrict unions to one per company and so on and so forth. But it goes back to culture, it goes back to legacy, it goes back to history. Are we likely to see large, big ticket investments into the manufacturing sector come in? Well, there's certainly skill available. I mean, and there is a, a, a base of certain kind of raw materials. So I don't see any reason why some type of manufacturing cannot happen here. In fact, they are they are happening. So, uh, but it could be certainly uh, fast tracked. And I think some of it is because the headwinds of the general yeah, economy. Yeah. And I think once that. Uh, gets over, I, I do sense some of that will happen. Yes. One thing which is going to be very important for the West Bengal in positioning is on manufacturing. Mm. And people are not able to understand the advantage that West Bengal has for manufacturing. It may be sounding that, you know, it is absurd that how can West Bengal have an advantage for manufacturing. manufacturing. But it has the large, biggest advantage in manufacturing in India today than any other state. Mm. And very simply, because West Bengal is one of the states which has parcels of barren land which are huge. Mm. Second advantage is on the power. Today power yeah. has become one of the biggest issues anywhere in the state, mm. in any state That's in the country. The cost of power, the availability of power. West Bengal has that advantage because we have most of the states in the eastern region, they are surplus in power. power. Right. So therefore the power cost is lower. Mm. So the power cost can actually get reduced and that can be taken up as an advantage if That's it right. can be harnessed well. Mm. And if West Bengal thoughtfully positions itself that we want to encourage manufacturing mm. to come here mm. and we are going to give you power between mm. four to four and a half rupees per unit right. and not at a loss. The state government doesn't make a loss. The distribution doesn't. Companies fact, don't make a loss. In fact, the SCBs are not making a loss as for the government. The SCBs are profitable today, is exactly. what he told. And we have we have private sector also. CSC is there. We have a power distribution company, and we we can clearly see the roadmap in front of us that how we can reduce the cost of power and not compromise on our profitability. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that is a great advantage, okay. and it can be positioned well. So, Puneet, you know, one of the other questions that I was talking to Dr. Mitra about is this entire perception issue when it comes to foreign direct investment because this is one area where the TMC and the left have converged in their opposition as far as FDI is concerned, of course in specific areas, but there's a lot of those areas, insurance, pension, retail, the list is long. Uh, do you believe that foreign investors may perhaps continue to be wary uh, in putting in big ticket money in, into uh, West Bengal given the perception issue when it comes to FDI? You know, I thought so and uh, I continue to believe that first Indians have to believe in the state and uh, you know FDI will lag Indian investment mm. 
Uh, but I think uh, there are... A Actually, today it's the other way around. The foreigners <laughs> are putting in money and the Indians are still waiting. But still it's not big money yet. Yeah. I mean, in some sectors, yes. But I was talking in general. In, in general, yeah. 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 Uh, so I think uh, I was there uh, uh, in the delegation which went to Singapore. And, uh, you know, I was very uh, impressed and uh, inspired to see that Changi Airport uh, has done a joint venture here. Yeah. And they've taken equity to build the first private airport in the country along with the developer. And uh, I think... Uh, that's a big endorsement uh, in terms of foreign investment here and it's a marquee investment. Mm. Um, and when you're trying to build a brand, obviously you need to showcase some marquee name. It's like an IPO. Yeah, you need some marquee names in your book absolutely. before you can uh, you know, get the wider public to believe yeah. in it. But I think there are a couple of other points which I think are globally relevant mm. uh, where, where Bengal can actually claim its position. Mm. And uh, it's a softer factor. It may not be large as, as manufacturing as um, uh, Mr. Kanodia was saying. But like India is known for tiger yeah. in the world. And India is also known for tea. Mm. Uh, so I think this is an area where like we have Sundarbans here. Yeah. And can we put disproportionate investment mm. uh, to get people to experience Bengal? It's like inducing trial. Mm. You know, if you come here mm. and if you experience the state, the hospitality, the yeah. culture, yeah. you talk to a few people, yeah. you know, you go back with positive memories mm. and then you can start expanding your thinking in terms of... Mm. So I think that's an area which they can claim disproportionately. Mm. Uh, the second is tea. I mean, Northeast is the only yeah. other competitor. Yeah. If they can do something for the tea industry yeah. and again disproportionately compete here right. and build it globally, mm. It is an area which India is already known for, mm. you know, so it's probably easy to, you know, capture that that's space right. which already exists in the that's consumer's right. mind. Yeah, that, that's a good point and I hope, uh, I hope the government and Dr. Mitra are listening to, to what you're saying and they give, uh, it gives them uh, good thoughts. But, uh, you know, again, I go back to, uh, and this is, this is what they're calling West Bengal, the road ahead, their plan of action. Uh, the aim is to reach the double-digit growth rates by 2017, to sustain it for at least eight years and to double the state's economy by 2025. On the back of what you've seen happen so far, on the back of the promises made, do you feel confident at all of being able to achieve the kind of roadmap that's been laid out? Uh, yes, I, I definitely uh, feel that it is possible, provided of course India, uh, which is now sort of, I see just getting back on its feet after a few years of sluggishness, mm. uh, gives it a little bit of a tailwind push. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think this is a very difficult task. Looking at the fact that in two years what they have been able to do and the kind of resolve that they are showing and the fact that Dr. Mitra himself is somebody who has worn the other shoe. Yes. He, he has been on the other side. So he knows the pain. He's he experienced knows, it yeah. first hand. So, <laughs> so I think he would be somebody who would be able to uh, relate very well to the challenges that we all face. Mm. And uh, he's now on the other side. So he can perhaps fix some of those problems that he knows uh, we encounter. Yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of government spending, and, and the, the emphasis, of course, continues to be as far as social sector schemes are concerned, health, education, the flagship Kanyashri program, and so on and so forth. But beyond that, in terms of physical infrastructure, addition as far as uh, power capacity is concerned, what is it that you would like to prioritize by way of government spending? I think government spending in infrastructure, basically roads, stall is already happening. But it needs to get accelerated because if the road network needs to be developed, it just cannot happen with the government money. Right. PPP model has to be implemented, even in the power sector, because these are two critical infrastructure which is required for any state and especially for West Bengal also. Mm. And I think getting into a double digit growth is not going to be very difficult if the strategy is clear. Mm. And the critical areas are identified. I'm not wanting to criticize because I'm just doing a critical analysis of it. Because if I have 8,000, 9,000 crore of investment mm -hmm. getting into West Bengal, so I have to be positive about yeah, it. And I am positive about it. But the government, if they want to speed up, there are certain critical areas which they can identify, take strategic decisions mm -hmm. that this is where we are going to focus investments will come in. Yes, absolutely. As long as the strategic thinking is clear and consistent, which as of today, the government seems to be saying the right things, but eventually it all comes down to doing the right things. So we will have to wait and see how much of the intent is actually translated into reality. Well, uh, I can say, having spent the last two days here, if for nothing else, at least the food is outstanding. So, so that, that's certainly going to be something that will be bringing me back to the city. But gentlemen, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Inside Kolkata.
Kolkata. And we do hope that when we have this conversation again, uh, we have uh, more data to back up the claims that the government is making and perhaps uh, you will be able brand ambassadors and bring investment into the state. Thanks very much for joining us on Inside Kolkata. From all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.